So you may remember that a while ago I stumbled upon the interesting world of rations and the technology of making a, a meal last for years, even decades in some instances, and still tastes good in some instances. And I'm still very fascinated by that. One of the reasons why I'm fascinated by that is because I found that there's actually like a community, or at least there's a community that's building. Yeah, this is actually the more interesting thing. For instance, one of these guys named Steve1989 Emory Info, he's only recently popped up on YouTube and he like makes Emer uh, ration videos where he just opens up old rations and eats the food and like inspects how they degraded, but he actually, he's, he's really like kind of preserving the technology of it. It, it's not it, it, it's not like oh let's open this up and let's eat it it's like oh let's open this up and analyze how it how it lasted 50 or 60 years so that's pretty cool you guys should probably go ahead and subscribe to him or at least I would want you to because over the past couple of months he's gotten like 20,000 subscribers and he's shot up and I really hope that he can just like shoot up really high it'd be really cool if he could get a bunch of subscribers but anyway so me and him have, him have been talking a lot about different ways to improve rations because for instance for me I want to use rations for like camping because when I'm camping I don't want to have to worry about trying to bring cook food with me or cook, cook food with me or cook food when I get there and having a, a tiny ration would be, would be really nice this though is kinda shitty for what I would want because like this is like what at most one day of, of food comfortably but there's so much shit left over. There's a plastic bag, there's the boxes inside, the bags that are around the boxes and stuff like that. It's like there's just so much trash left over. Also, in most of the fancier and, and like the military rations, they have a ration heater, which is basically a bag with a chemical inside. You pour water into it, and once you pour water into it, you cannot turn it off. It is heating. It is converting all that chemical energy into heat and releasing explosive hydrogen. So you have a risk of detonating the hydrogen and not being able to turn not being able to control that turning on and off and it releasing dangerous chemicals uh, da well flammable gases at least or a flammable gas whatever it is hydrogen that's not the nice it's not the greatest and it's only one time use so I've been trying to think of could I make an electric lithium powered ration heater. I would use lithium 18650 cells, or at least the first version of it would. Maybe you're getting square cells, flat packs would be better. Not really sure though. And somebody gave me a bunch of these little like filament wire things. They're for something like heating coil. I think from like a, I think they're from like a heating blanket. But yeah, that these might actually do okay these might be able to survive up to like 160 degrees and 160 degrees is pretty good for food in my opinion so now the only question is how much energy or how many lithium cells will it take to heat up the main course of a ration that's what I want to find out today so I say let's open this up Oh, go on. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that. Now, this is the same exact ration that I ate a few months ago, so there's really nothing to show. So here we have, here we have the, the Pinto stew. Stew. You see, like that. Why do we... Why? Actually, because it has the information on it that I'll need for calculating the energy. Maybe I shouldn't throw things when I'm trying to collect the data. Okay, so this weighs 227 grams. That might be interesting to know. So this is the food, and it's room temperature. Well, I think I can just grab a filament of wire, maybe, or not. Make sure that it doesn't have any kinks in it or anything. Mm. It's kind of screwed up, but you know, because whoever had this, they just ripped it out of whatever it was in. 
at the heating blanket or whatever. Okay, so we have a nice little selection here. And I say, let's just wrap it around. Oh wait, we should probably, it's usually better to like push it all the way down. Or actually, I don't know. There will be more surface area and less of a distance to any particular part of the food. So it probably would be better to have it all laying out. So yeah, we better do that like this. And this alone isn't the greatest. I just, I would want there to be a little bit more filament. So let's grab another one. I just realized I wasn't going down to the bottom here. Okay, so here we have these two sections all wound around this. I'll take this packing envelope and stick that around it. So now we have an insulated heater. So looking through my thermal camera, the ration main course is about 71 degrees. It's pretty much room temperature. I have it connected up to my power supply. I can power that on. Start pulling power. And the voltage and the power going through it is starting to heat it up, as you can see. Ah, it's already starting to warm it up. The main question, though, is how quickly can it transfer that heat into the ration? So before we start the test, let's put this into the little insulating box. And let's put a little weight on top of it, just to make sure it presses down a good amount. Two amps would be about right, because I was testing it before with one amp, with one amp. Well, this is actually two wires though, so I should go with two. So now let's let this sit for about 15 minutes to see how much the temperature rises. In 15 minutes, if the voltage doesn't go up very much, it should be roughly the the amount of energy that is in an 18650 cell. And I think I did the math before, and a single 18650 cell trying to heat up this size ration in a kind of perfect universe it should be like maybe 15 or 20 degrees Celsius elevation I don't know so my thermal camera says about 136 degrees Fahrenheit on the bottom and this is very very warm very warm disconnect these whoa this is actually pretty good. Huh. The end is a little bit cool, but wow, I would totally eat this. Hmm. I guess 130 degrees isn't all that bad. I'm just gonna mix it back and forth. It's actually like really, really warm. Really, really warm. Maybe an electric lithium powered MRE heater or ration heater would be nice. Wow, this is awesome. This is actually warmer than I like. And so let's see what the temperature is. I'm gonna equalize it by spreading it all out. So there we have an equalized temperature. Just 105 degrees. I guess I really like my food cold. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, 105, this feels perfectly fine for me. Wow. I mean, that'd be great. This is all cool. And this is still warm. Now, it's warm to the touch, though. So that's the big question. Is it warm to the taste? I don't know. I feel like I need to work on more efficient methods of this before I start eating up all my rations, though. So this main course ended up taking about 8.4 uh, watt hours of energy to heat up to about 105 degrees. That's about as much energy that's in a 2000 milliamp hour lithium cell. That's pretty good. So. 
If I could ever find myself some like 3000 milliamp hour Panasonic cells, that could probably go up to maybe like 120, 130 degrees. It'd be pretty good. Well, this test is getting a bit difficult to do. So I'm redesigning, or she, I'm just designing a method to hold the heating filament coil thingamabob. So it won't be as difficult to wrap it around each time because I'm just not going to wrap it around each time. Basically, I took the box from the main course and I made this. Just these little tabs that the wire is overlapped around. So I'm just going to go through and snip these. So now we have these two I guess we could call them filament pads. And we have this, which is actually at a temperature of about 72, 73 ish degrees now. Roughly the same temperature as before. And let's stick that on there. So put some weight on it. And we'll turn on the power. Give it two amps, and then we'll get back to about 15 minutes to see how high the temperature has been elevated. Okay, it's now been 15 minutes. Let's see what we got. It feels quite warm. It's like next I'll have to work on the insulation. So through my thermal camera, you can see that the envelope itself, is that it? Pretty low, degree, pretty low temperature, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And you open up the coil thingamajig. The food itself, whoa, it is even hotter than before. Should I get it back and forth to equalize the temperature? Yeah, look at that, 120. That helped a lot, a surprising amount. I would definitely eat that. Looks like it's now equalizing down to about 110 degrees. Or maybe maybe back to 105, not really sure. I'm very happy with this though. I can definitely eat this. So I'm generally fine with like lukewarm food, or at least some people would say lukewarm. 105 degrees seems perfectly fine to me. Seems very eatable. But I am still very happy with how this came out. Especially for just being wire wrapped around a couple pieces of cardboard. And the other fact that this is this is taking the same power as before so it's still about if, if my calculations are correct about the power of a really nice 18650 well nice for me i, I guess I, I guess when they're actually coming new from panasonic they're actually higher capacity so never mind possible upgrades okay so first upgrade i can think of is to not have cardboard that's a good upgrade. Second up upgrade would also have not just some shipping envelope as the insulation. You'd have actually a nice little bit of insulation around it. Maybe like some really, like something from like winter material or something like that. Another upgrade would be to change the wiring so it can just work directly off of four volts. Basically, it would just be more of these strands just in parallel. So it'll be shorter strands, just more of those strands. So across four volts, it'll it'll still be able to heat up the same amount. Those going to 17 volts, then well, I guess you could just cut cut them into fourths. So just cut them into a quarter of each one, and then those would take four volts if that works. I don't really know. It would take higher amperage though, so I have to make sure that I have a big enough battery. But depending on your personal taste, if you like food really hot, it'll take more power. If you if you're fine with really cool food, it'll last a lot longer. But 
one battery pack, one MRE, or one ration heater should heat, I'm hoping like eight or so main courses. That would be pretty nice. I also want it to be like a, a battery backup for like charging a phone and stuff like that. Because a large battery pack with like eight of these lithium cells would be able to charge a phone a lot or run a GPS reader or something like that, or a GPS tracker or something. But yeah, so this is pretty much the extent of what I can do on a lazy Sunday afternoon. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you check out Steve's channel. It's actually really enjoyable. Thanks for watching. See ya.